Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It's Monday. It is time for our daily devotion, so I want to invite you to come and join me, if you would, please. Leave a quick comment as you do. Let me know that you are here. If you're someone who watches this later, I encourage you to also leave a quick comment and just let me know that you stopped by for our devotion time today. I'm looking forward to this, our, our simple time of uh, prayer, reading scripture, reading the devotion out of the upper room, taking some moments to reflect upon it, and then closing in prayer as well. I'm going to pause for a second, just kind of watch the Facebook feed, see who joins and leaves quick comments, or if you don't leave a comment, at least tell me you're here. Good morning, Linda Potter. Hi, Stacy. Good morning. Welcome back to you and Gary. Glad you're home. Good morning, Barb Meyer. Hope you're feeling much better. Hi, Pat. Good morning to you. Oh, Barb, that's great to hear. Oh, Stacy, you poor thing. Oh. I just heard a news article that talked about a cruise ship that uh, had like 800 passengers and a significant number of them have COVID. Yeah. Good night, nurse. By the way, everybody, if you didn't know this, yesterday was Pat's birthday, so happy birthday, Pat. I do believe that's correct, according to Facebook. <laughs> if I'm wrong, yeah, you got a happy birthday anyway. Hi, Bill Longmire. Good morning to you, sir. We're going to be reading out of John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. John chapter 3, 16 to 18. Good morning, Jack. Hi, Marilyn. Good morning to you. John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. All right, here's our opening prayer, friends. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. So prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. For God expressed his love for the world in this way. He gave his only son so that whoever believes in him will not face everlasting destruction, but will have everlasting life. Here's the point. God didn't send his son into the world to judge it. Instead, he is here to rescue a world headed towards certain destruction. No one who believes in him has to fear condemnation. Yet condemnation is already the reality for everyone who refuses to believe because they reject the name of the only Son of God. So our devotion writer today is Donna Gurr. Donna is from Oregon, and her focus first is verse 17. God didn't send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. That's the common English version of verse 17. And here is Donna's devotion. 
The billboard near the highway displayed a photograph of a young Muslim woman with a head covering. The caption read, We are fully inclusive. I felt a tinge of offense at the community college ad. Why the push to accept Islam? Then Jesus spoke to my heart, saying, I am fully inclusive. The contrast between the words of Jesus and my reaction to the billboard left me stunned. I felt sadness at my failure to represent him. His words had exposed my bigotry. Jesus is unbiased. He unreservedly welcomes every human being regardless of religion or background. But like the Pharisees of Jesus' day, I was demanding that people meet certain criteria in order for God to receive them and love them. God deeply loves and values every person, and the Son of God paid the ultimate price for all people. God invites us to come as we are. In the embrace of God's extravagant love and acceptance, there is redemption, forgiveness, and peace. This is the good news for all. So the thought for the day is Jesus sees everyone through eyes of lavish love. Um, I find this to be an interesting article particularly considering a lot of what's going on within our own cultural context in the, in the United States. Uh, we have this, um, we have this uh, drive, I'm going to put it that way, we, we have this push towards inclusion. And yet, if you do any kind of reading on um, humanity, we're tribal. We are people who are... Um, almost uniquely incapable of being fully inclusive. It's just not within us, um, all on our own, whether it be individually or socially. We are going to have our little group. We're going to have our little clique that we naturally fit into. We use the term in the church called affinity groups. All right, and so affinity groups, if you use this as a, as a model for small groups, is putting people into, into classes or small bands or small groups based upon like commonalities, not diversity, right? So you put them into what's called an affinity group. We try to make appointments in the annual conference based upon affinity. You know, will this pastor fit within the context well, right? I'm not, I mean, I, I have done rural ministry, but it is not something that um, it is my affinity group. I'm a suburbanite, an urbanite, because that's most of where I've spent all you know my life, uh, particularly my formative life and my adult life. And so my affinity is more for that. And the other thing, too, that, that's kind of interesting is, is um, I, I think there's some theological extrapolation here, you know, about Jesus being unbiased, fully inclusive, fully welcoming. Uh, There are some moments in scripture where Jesus isn't too welcoming. Um, There are moments where uh, he has to be challenged about his perspective. You think about Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman who comes to him and she asks him um, to consider the Samaritan people. And Jesus says, I have come for my own And she says to him this particular line. She says, even dogs get scraps off the master's table every once in a while. And that many people see that as a a turn in Jesus' ministry, where it opens his eyes to, or maybe broadens, his ministry perspective. And so he starts including more Gentiles into his ministry. Whereas for the most part in in the gospel, he'd spend all of his time with his own people, with Jewish people. So and even Jesus had some moments where he has to be. And, and he definitely was not very welcoming to those who thought of themselves as the moral and the religious elite. The people who had cornered the market and could tell everybody else about their morality and their religious perspective or, or how they fit in or didn't fit in, right? And so I wonder if Jesus would be uh, maybe just as um, exclusive to that kind of you know, folk today. When we think of it, though, I I think what we want to do is try to figure out how to be um, not as judgmental of others as we are today. Because a lot of of what I think causes our exclusivities, um, our inability to be inclusive, is how we're judgmental of other people. And I'm, I'm 
I'm on the top of the list of this too, friends. It's, it's something that's a habit of mine. And that's something that I battle as well. I'd like to be more inclusive. I'd like to be a little bit more rounded and a little better person to my neighbor than what I am today. But I'm not going to be perfect at it. I don't really expect that I'll ever be perfect at it. I just want to get a little bit closer to the image of Jesus and to try to model and live that out a little bit better each day. And so I think maybe for, for me to be reminded is, number one, that God has extended this lavish grace upon me, and God has extended this lavish grace upon each one of us. Uh, if you read in the Advent stories, uh, when, when Jesus comes, God is, is fulfilling history of grace. God is the one who's the main actor in coming to us. And, it, and fulfilling this, um, this objective of extending grace to all the world. In Jesus, he is the model of God's grace that has come for all the world. So God's this great actor in human history. We simply are supposed to be recipients of it and then sharers of that in the world today. And so I'm hoping that in some ways, I might see more of this grace in my life and realize that it's there, and that I might be more graceful and how I interact with the world around me. And in some ways, that maybe will uh, strip away some of my own biases, my own bigotry, and hopefully, maybe, in some ways, help me to be a little bit more open to other people. How about you? What are you praying for today? Are you just perfectly content being as you are and and the ways in which you find yourself being tribal and even though we may talk about being inclusive, the ways in which you live a very excluded kind of life, are you okay with that? Or are you hoping that maybe God does a little bit of something in you today that will broaden you, open you up, and help you become a little bit more like his son Jesus? Let's take a moment to pause and pray. So gracious God, thank you for accepting us as we are. Reveal in us any prejudice that we might have so that we can repent of it and align our hearts and our attitudes to more closely reflect you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks, friends, for being here. Come join me tomorrow for our devotion time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our devotion time. And I'll look forward to being with you. Don't forget, if you watch this a little bit later on, leave a quick comment. Let me know that you were present today. Hi, Gene Fisher. I'm glad you're here. Hi, Barbara. Glad you made it today as well. Uh, again, for those of you that watch later, feel free to leave a quick comment. If you'd like, feel free to also maybe post this on your own Facebook page and share it with your family and your friends. Otherwise, I'll look forward to being with you tomorrow. God's grace and peace be upon you. See you later, friends.